everybody? It's Michelle here with Angel Souls. I'm going to be talking here about the number 1111, November 11th, 1111. And what does that really mean? We see that as like, it gets hyped up. It, uh, unfortunately, well, let's talk about this. Uh, if you didn't watch the weekly that I just, uh, released around the time I'm releasing this video, make sure you go back and watch that. Uh, because this is kind of going into that messaging. We complain about things like marketing, and yet the reason why there's marketing is because that's how our brains work, <laughs> okay? <laughs> um, complaining about, you know, like the 1111 thing getting hyped up, it waters it down. I got that. I'm with you on that, but you wouldn't have clicked on it if it wasn't hashtag 1111 or hashtag 1111 portal, right? It, it tickles your brain, so you click on it, right? So let's... Let me do what I can here to slice through some of that, okay? And let's get into what this typically means and what this might be uh, doing for us as a collective this time around, all right? So 1111, this is the Ascension number, right? So this is supposed to be the number that you would see. Unfortunately, again, this does get used in manipulative ways in marketing, right? Like we're not talking about pure manipulation in the beginning here. I'm talking about now we're talking, you know, people putting that in their phone number and, you know, all that good stuff to, because it's easy to remember, your brain catches it and draws its attention to it, all that good stuff. But, you know, in, in the spiritual sense, 1111 is an energetic upgrade. It is finally cracking open, manifesting, but manifesting your truest potential. Now, there are people who misuse this energy and they get out their vision boards and put their Bugatti on there and all of that. Um, and then they get more materialism focused, right? Rather than the human experience focused or um, just energetically just trying to be the best person you can be. Not so that you look good or so that people admire you or so that you're manifesting and drawing in riches, right? Doesn't mean you're bad if you're rich, okay? I just want to make that clear. But <laughs> but if that is all-consuming, if that is the thing that occupies your mind, yeah, you're not going to care who's dying overseas. You're not going to care about innocence, innocent people. You're not going to care about that. Because that part of your brain's not lit up. What does 1111 mean usually to a lot of people? Sometimes it's make a wish. Yay, 1111. Um, it makes me special because I see 1111 all the time. Actually, no. Um, 1111, especially when it's used from an angelic messaging standpoint, angels want you to, first of all, angels are and archangels are a very different frequency than we are. So there could be a lot lost in translation. So things like number codes, activation codes, we see that. We're a mathematical universe, right? We're mathematical beings. Our brains function like that. So we'll, we'll see it, right? So if you see 1111, you have to first stop and say, okay, is that, did I feel anything? Did I, do I just know that that's in that phone number on that building? I do that with 444. <laughs> like there used to be a place I would drive by, always had 444 in the, um, in the phone number. So that doesn't count. Okay. I'm talking about like you're walking this direction. You feel the need to look over here and then you see 1111, right? Then you have to stop, stop, take a beat. Don't overthink it. How do you feel? What did that just do to you? Did you have a jolt? If you had a jolt, okay. Like, whoa, that's weird. <laughs> it got your attention. Sit with it still and see how it's landing. Because if you sit with it, you'll get messages. Okay. Now, if it's something that was just a manipulation tactic, you'll look at it and go, oh, you'll know. You'll know. Go, mm -hmm. I see you, 1-800-1111. <laughs> I see you and I know, I know what that is. So there's a difference there. 1111 this time around. Because it is a manifestation code. It's a manifestation number. We can manifest bad stuff too. Or we say things like, I, I can't tell you how often I've seen people say, 
I want to manifest this big, beautiful home. And then all of a sudden they like lose their job. The universe, people say the universe is quite literal. I don't agree with that. I think the universe sees things far more clearly than, <laughs> than we do, right? So if you're asking and saying, I want, I just want uh, a big, beautiful home as a status symbol. This is what a lot of people do around this time. I want this as a status symbol. And then you lose your job. Because you've made the very distinctive choice to live a materialistic life. So if you want the materialistic life, you're going to have to go through all the lessons of how to make that money and, and how to get yourself there. That is the route you chose. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. <laughs> That's the route you chose. So you're going to go down that road. What's going to happen? Well, you might end up you know, becoming ah, like a sensation on social media and all of a sudden you're making all these monies, right? <laughs> and then you get everything you want and probably what's going to be the lesson. We hear it over and over and over again. Loneliness or be having disingenuine friends. Um, disingenuine, is that a word? Um, not having very genuine friends. Uh, people don't really care about you. They just want you for your status and your money. You know, we hear that. It's almost like a trope, right? We hear that quite a bit. Whereas if you say, universe, I want to just show up and be the best human I can be. I want to have beautiful connections with people that are authentic, based on love of all kinds. And yeah, I like to have a, a house that makes me feel serene, a home filled with grace, a home filled with love. And yeah, I would kind of like it to kind of look like this, right? You might still lose your job, but it's for a different reason. Because maybe the job that you're in is energetically draining you. So you can't be in alignment with that grace and love. Because your energy is being too taxed in this one job. Okay. So there's a couple of very distinct, <laughs> very opposite direction kind of uh, examples, right? So bear that in mind around this time. This can also be the time that we relearn lessons. So if you have not, if, how do I want to say this? Like if you... I don't know why I'm getting this image in my head. Okay, but bear with me. So I'm picturing a pickup truck. It's popped up in my head. A pickup truck and a trailer, a hitch, right? For those of you who said, okay, I don't know how to do this. I need to study how to get this trailer attached to this truck. What do I need to know? Hooking up the tail light so it's safe, making sure it's attached snugly. How do I handle the vehicle now that I have this thing on the back? Okay, I'm going to learn all of that. That type of person, and we're using this as like the weirdest metaphor ever, okay, they're ready to get into the driver's seat and go. They've prepped. They've looked into it. They've done the work. Somebody else who just maybe assumes everybody else is going to do everything for them or is just like, I don't, I don't need to worry about all that. They might figure out how to get the trailer attached, but they start driving off and there are no taillights and the thing's swaying all over the place. They might become disconnected and go flying off the road. I told you this wasn't great, okay? But this is what we're doing. Thanks for being here. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking at when we're talking about 1111. Now, 1111 is also very attached to Archangel Metatron. Who is Metatron? Metatron is the Archangel who's who oversees a lot, but like sacred geometry, Numerical codes, uh, your ascension process, your intuition. He's great to help you study if you need to do some sort of testing or something like that. Time management, learning your lessons, like on a soul level, not where your little brain is going, well, I feel like I learned my lesson. No, <laughs> right? <laughs> on a deep level. And also he's known as the sacred scribe. So if you are a writer, you can work with Metatron, you can work with Archangel Gabriel as well. Uh, to help you find your voice, to bring that forward. So when we bring Metatron into the equation, this is no joke. Metatron is a huge energy. 
And he's about energetic upgrades. Remember the example of, I, I said I did, I, you know, I did all the work, I did all the work, but you pull away and you don't have the trailer attached. Yeah. Okay. It's like, <laughs> it's going to be like that, right? So Metatron, some people are not even, you're, you're not, I don't know. I don't want to sit here and say like, you're not ready to work with Metatron. That sounds awful. And that's not even true. You can work with Metatron if you want. It's not about us and how we talk to these archangels and angels it's how we receive. And that's why I do what I do. I help people get into a space where they know how to take the message in without manipulating it, without letting fear get in the way and have you misinterpret it. Okay. So this could be for some people a time of hard lessons. And where people are right now, I think they're going to be in panic. They're going to be in survival mode. They're going to double down on bad choices, just trying to grapple at whatever, especially as I just, I just heard Metatron say there will be great course corrections for individuals and the world. So that's fun. Okay. So that's going to be great. Uh, <laughs> so if you have not learned the lesson to put your foot down and lit, not put your foot down in an ego sense so that you can be right, but put your foot down and say, okay, I'm not living in a way that feels genuine to my heart. I'm stressed all the time. Um, I don't feel loved. I don't feel like my friends are listening to me. I don't feel like my love partner cares. I don't, you know, I, I just kind of put up with family dynamics just to go along to get along because that's the expectation. You know, whatever the case may be, you, this is a time where you'll be examining that. And you can't think your way through this. You think your way through this, you will fail. Even if, in your perception, you might say, look at me. I, I'm doing it. Look, look at all my proof here and there and there and there. A success in your 3D world does not equate to a soul level success. Not at all. That's why when... Okay, I'll, give, I'll use myself as an example. These past several years, on a spiritual level, on a soul level, I don't know why. I think, I think before I got in here, I was like, listen, hey, yo, can you just pack all this like into a short period of time? Because I don't want to mess with it. Let's just get it done. I, th I think I did that. Um, so it was one unbelievable, you've got to be kidding me. Who does this happen to? <laughs> Not, not come from a victim standpoint, but just like genuine, what? Question mark, exclamation point, what? You know, like what is even going on here? And I don't know if I've come out the other side. I kind of still feel like I'm in it, but I'll, well, I'll report back. But came out of that and it was only, you've heard this before, only in hindsight that I said, oh, oh yeah. When I started all that, I was this, this, and this. And I was allowing this, this, and this. And then I went through all these things. And now I'm in a very different place. If you go back and watch my very first video on Angel Souls. Y'all, I still have that dress. I still have that dress that I wore. I'm like very like nervous, obviously. And look at me now. Not a care in the world. <laughs> when the camera comes on, I'm like whatever, you know. But really doing things that I always never, well, I never imagined it. Right? I didn't want to be in front of the camera, but I felt like I had this little thing to do. Felt compelled to do this kind of work. This was just the vehicle that I was very nervous about using. Right? I never thought that I would do live sessions. Never thought I would do live sessions. It's too, too scary to think about. Like someone's looking at me. Here, I know people are looking at me, but like, I, I, I don't know when. <laughs> so there's a buffer, right? But alive, I mean, that's someone right there in front of you. And I especially never imagined that I would get on a platform and there would be people behind the scenes and they hit go. And now all eyes are on me. I was never that person. I'm not that person now. It's very uncomfortable. Um, one of the things that I'm still learning, just to give you an example, is... Not being afraid to be seen. It's almost become, I mean, it's become embarrassing 
how many books I've written that are just tucked away on a disc somewhere. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get out there. And I'm going to do it. And I was feeling real brave. And then I got into it. And this fear, being very transparent with you here, this fear comes over me. Some bad memories are attached to that. Sure. It's probably part of the block. But I'm afraid to be seen. And I'm afraid to put things out there. And what happens? I shut down. I go back to what I'm used to. And it sits there. It just sits in the drawer. Right? I'm still learning that lesson. And it's okay. It's okay. It's all good. Because again, I learn things on a soul level that have helped me come through a lot of what I signed up to do in this lifetime. I've come through and I'm still here. I'm still here. I made it through. Give yourself some credit for that. Who cares if you're not a gazillionaire? Who cares if you aren't, I don't know, the best in your field with the fanciest title? Those people are usually jerks anyway. I said it. I said it. Leave your comments down below. I'll talk about it more. Okay. <laughs> They're usually not fully uh, developed humans. Okay, I don't know what I don't know what's in there. Okay, but it's not great. It's not great. So <laughs> keep in mind on this eleven eleven date that this is not about oh this is my year to get married. Oh, oh, that's a whole other video. Uh, but like that's a status thing. That's a status thing. And why is it so important? Because we're, the whole stinking world does this. Because if you're not in a relationship, you're you're sad and lonely. Here's the thing. Right now, especially, I just moved. Could I use a love partner to support me? Yeah. That'd be great. That's wonderful. What's better? Help me unpack. Okay? Put this furniture together that we had to take apart to get in the truck. Uh. <laughs> I got things on my list. Okay, help me with the list. You know, like that. That that's that's the most attractive thing ever. Okay, but like beyond that, how many of you are in love partnerships where you're miserable? So let's talk about that. What could be potentially happening around this time? Absolute breakdowns. Now this is an eleven eleven date that's coming up on the twenty twenty four year, which is. There, there was a whole video I did, 2020 to 2024. Go back and watch that. Uh, 2024, at least right now, where it stands energetically, is the final sort of destruction year. So that means everything that hasn't been demolished yet or broken down, if it's still in play and it needed to go, this is the time it goes. Okay, so I'm going to do a whole other video on that. So this 11-11 time this year, you can handle this any way that feels appropriate for you. I would encourage you to at least give yourself five minutes. <laughs> give yourself five minutes and not meditate to create something. I'm not doing that. This is good. Thanks for being a part of the problem. Okay. Um, uh, what did I just say? Right. <laughs> give five minutes of peace, harmony, love and grace with no expectations from there if you're if you're feeling like okay i got this right go into another five minutes of meditation and just connect with the divine open your heart and say i would like to experience this on my path and the highest good of everyone involved no harm to anyone blessings to all Help me find my peace. Let me be peace. However you want to word that. And then if you're feeling real saucy and you say, well, I got this meditation thing down, go another five minutes and ask Archangel Metatron to come forward. Now, if you don't perceive Archangel Metatron, that's okay. Okay. Right? Doesn't mean you're better or worse if you can, you know, see him, hear him, feel him, whatever. Some people are built for that kind of communication and that probably is their job then, right? Um, or if you're not, well, that's okay. It doesn't make you a worse human or like you're missing out or you're going to get left behind. As long as you're authentic to what you were built for, what you came here to do, that's what this time is all about. But if you want to try to work with Metatron, even if you don't perceive him, that's okay. 
the presence is still there. This is a loving of God light, love and light, however you want to see that, right? Of purity. And that will help you get through your day. I'm not promising this is going to be a good day. Um, I'm not promising it's going to be a bad day. And I'm not saying that it's only on this day. This has a reach, right? 11 11 builds up to 12 12. We go into 2024. 20, it's going to be interesting. That's the word I want to put on this day. Interesting. Watch your ego. All right. We'll leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.